When doctors take the Hippocratic Oath, they promise to do no harm. Problem is, surgery can do harm all too easily. So some researchers are working in ways to make surgery less invasive by turning it literally into an inside job. Imagine uh, being able to actually swallow the robot and then having that robot perform uh, internal surgery um, without ever having to cut uh, any incisions in the abdominal or chest cavities. It's the kind of surgery Dr. Dmitry Olenikov and robotics engineer Shane Ferreter envision, and they've created some robots to do the job. Some that crawl, some that stand upright. I would liken this to shrinking the surgeon and placing them inside the area of surgery versus having a surgeon stand from the outside and reach in with a long um, tool or a chopstick, as it were. The surgeon still has control, but these robots will do most of the dirty work. Ultimately, I think the mobile robots are going to be our, our task assistant robots, the ones that can actually go in, do a little biopsy, do some dissection, do some cutting. Um, and then our, our fixed-based robots will be the robots that provide kind of the overview. They'll provide sort of a, a view of the entire abdominal cavity. And this one here has some LEDs on it so we can provide our own lighting capability. And when you retract it, it still comes through the normal port size. Today's surgeries are already less invasive thanks to machines like Da Vinci. It's a laparoscopic machine that lets doctors insert surgical instruments like forceps, scalpels and cameras through small incisions. This and other laparoscopic methods drastically reduce the patient's trauma, but they also restrict the surgeon who's sitting at a separate console. I always tell my friends and, re and, and the residents that I work with that uh, doing minimally invasive surgery is a little bit like trying to eat uh, rice grain by grain with chopsticks. Um, it's slow, uh, it's unwieldy, and unless you've had a great deal of practice, it's hard to do. The laparoscopy tools limit the surgeon's range of movement and view of the patient's insides. The surgeon can't directly touch things, the surgeon can't directly see things. So we've made a family of robots that are inserted through these small holes. Once you're on the inside, you can see things, you can touch things, and the robots on the inside can uh, really have direct access to the surgical environment. The robot is inserted through a plastic tube called a port. Once inside, the two-wheeled robot can drive around the patient's organs. And it has a small camera in between the two wheels so that you can observe things, and that video is shown to the surgeon. So the surgeon can do exploration and uh, do biopsy and some other things through a single port. Right now, they're being tested in pigs during gallbladder removal. So Getting the robots inside is the easy part, Navigating the organs, that's a little trickier. Too much traction and uh, the robot winds the tissues around itself. Too little traction and you just skid around like trying to walk on, on a frozen pond. How's it looking, Mark? Looking ready to go. Shane Farreter knows about building robots for foreign environments. He did some of the early work on NASA's Mars rovers. He says moving around the Martian surface isn't so different from moving around inside the human body. It's slick in there, it's hilly. There are hills in there that are two or three times the diameter of the robot or diameter of the wheel. And it's soft, so often you sink in half a wheel diameter. And you can imagine being in your car and sinking into the terrain half a wheel diameter. It's, it's a very challenging environment. Although the test robots are wired, they'll eventually be wireless. But putting wireless capabilities inside the robot means making it bigger. Power is a problem. If a robot is in a remote environment like that, it has to provide its own power, so there's, you need space for batteries. Uh, transmitting video is a challenging thing, and surgeons demand really high quality video. That's the image there. And then the other issue is getting commands into the robot itself. Again, you want to have a low power receiver, which is a challenge as well. Mechanical engineer Mark Rentschler knows firsthand how difficult it is to keep the robots small. He designs them. This will be the first. Well, what we got going on is we got lots of different mechanical components and electrical components inside the mobile robots. I mean, there's the wheels, but then there's also motors inside, electrical boards, cameras, lenses. Electrical engineer Jason Dumpert would like to reduce the circuitry inside the robots, but he says components on the market today just aren't small enough. Right here is a camera chip that we use for all of our devices, and it's you can see it's it's very small. We'd like to have it 
half this size. For now, the goal is to make the robots work, then worry about the size of them. It's also about making them safe for potential patients. We've been very careful in order to do that. Things like making sure that the, the batteries don't shock the person or that the materials we use in the robot are not toxic have already been explored and we use only medical grade materials. Of course, there is the, the, the odd um, chance that the miniature robot can go wild on the inside, but since they are powered by miniature motors uh, with, a, with little miniature watch batteries, I think a robot that went awry would just be removed and replaced by a better working robot. Back up the camera. The researchers hope to begin testing the robots in human surgeries before the end of the year. If that happens, surgeons will have a whole new way to explore the human body.